But against Ember Spirit and Necro, even if you have a Lincoln Sphere, you're still going to get hit by, you know, Yaps or Stun with the Nyx Assassin Ember with so much magic damage. Pre-BKB, you can get very easily run over. And we, we did see that in their series yesterday, right? Game number two there, uh, Weaver kind of got, uh, got run out a little bit. They brought it Game back looks in. like it's on Yol, to be honest, uh, on the Sand King. Mm. His blink timing is going to be super important. The infest plays from him, the instant stuns onto the Ember Spirit, trying to hold him in place long enough for them to actually kill him. Not going to be easy. Sure isn't. Lane-wise, I'm really, I'm really intrigued about what Secret are going to do here. Like, where, where do they put the two supports? Where do they put the Necro? Is it going to be the aggro dual lane? Do they put Ace maybe in the off lane and have Puppy helping him out with the Bounty Hunter and moving between off lane and mid? There's a few little things they can do here. I would start on... Ace off lane because I think they're going to try and match yeah. up to the Lone Druid. Thank you. Oh, but they have the Bounty Hunter. That's actually pretty slick. So I think Puppy's goal should be to get like oh, in here as fast as possible. Um, or somebody. Try and find out what these lanes are going to be, right? Yeah. See if you can spot exactly what's happening. Yeah, he's going to pop that smoke right up. So haha, -ha, sucker. I found you. Follow you. And like, what do you even do with Yol here? You're just like, all right, well, I should just, I guess. <laughs> I, like, what's the point of placing a ward? Yeah, I have been scouted. They know oh. my location. Well, Hook moves up to top, gonna go into the magic wand as soon as humanly possible. Already has a bunch of the components, mid one. Oh, that's smart. On his necro, what's what's happening? What's smart? Oh, no, he, he just like putting that ward there to kind of spot exactly if he comes back and now he can follow him once more. He's gonna go for a lane ward here. He goes for one down there. Puppy knows the general area, but y'all... Yeah, he knows it's in here if he spots y'all again. But y'all's being very sneaky. He has. Yeah, uh, so he hasn't seen him yet, so, um, he should know, he didn't come down here, so he knows there's probably a ward in this area, but, as to where it is, can't be too sure. It's hiding away. Mid one Ember, though. One of his signature heroes, for sure. Outside inv of Invoker, Ember Spirit is probably one of his best. Yapsor boots first on the Nyx, and it looks like Ace will just be shifting down towards the bottom lane for now. Hook in a solo offlane role as the Necro. How is They're going to find that matchup they want it, though, right? I think I think this is good for the Dire. It's exactly what they want. They want Lich Lifestealer up against Lone Druid. Yeah. And then the same thing so. can roam around from this aggressive two and a half lane towards the mid. Ember Spirit, yep. very susceptible to just getting run at when he's level one and two. You know, Burrow Strike into Arrow, very, very potent combo just to get some extra right clicks in and burn through that regen. But this block here, we're seeing, I feel like we're seeing this um, more and more. If you know that you're in a kind of unfavorable matchup, you kind of push the lane into the tower or allow your opponents to block while you semi-block or let like one creep go forward. And then you get the kind of double wave or one and a half wave and you're able to actually hold it up here again. So you, you yeah. kind of lose out a little bit in the first wave, you know, the first 30 seconds or something, but you make, you make it back in the next minute or two minutes where mid one last hitting like a god under the tower. You secure all these last hits, and now you're going to get all the experience as well. But more importantly, Sand King doesn't have an avenue of attack. You know, if you have the wave held in a neutral position, Sand King has all of these ways to come in and try and stun you. Now he has to go in under the tower, and there's no angle for an arrow, so you can't have the chain stun either. They're doing a decent job at chipping away at mid one, but it's uh, a nice little move there by the Ember Spirit. And I like that people are experimenting a lot more with the blocking of waves, and not just going for the right, we're going to keep it in a neutral position. We're just going to keep it here. Yeah, everyone's not just doing their, you know, best possible block in a sense, the open AI. They, they are learning. The machine learning is being applied to our mid <laughs> players, apparently. Uh -oh. the, uh, the courier, that's a big courier coming through here. That's huge. What is this cosmetic? Where are you looking? Oh, the, uh, Galant's value. The, the Sand King. No, the Sand King. No. Just, it just delivered right through. Oh, right. Uh, I'm, wondering, I'm wondering what the hell you're talking about. Jeez, I see a career on, with Gary. no items on it back in the base. I'm like, <laughs> well, this, well, it's a lizard. It's not doing anything. It's just standing there. But okay, I get you now. The Sand King's delivering items to the Marana. Yeah. Fair enough. Okay. But I, I actually do wonder how, like, it Sorry, seems like... It's too early it for is. those jokes. <laughs> I apologize. I'm just too slow. No, I'm, it's my fault. I'm too slow. Um, I, I do wonder though, it seems quite kind of co coincidental that people are, you know, funking around with these blocks and the mid lane uh, kind of equilibrium and the dynamic of shifting the waves straight after the open AI bot and people practicing against it, right? It feels like people yeah. have, have been training hard to try and beat the bot and to train hard you've got to, you know, figure out ways to 
trick the bot or find ways to, you know, kind of shift the status quo away from what the bot is used to and what yeah. no normal players are used to. You know, human players, they get stuck in these kind of, you know, ruts where, yeah, oh, oh Yapsaw, down bottom lane. He has a DD rune, but it's open wounds and the right clicks from the Lich very nearly bring him down. Fortunately, though, Nyx with the HP regen from Tango and the natural base regen he has, 11.5 allows him to get back to a decent total, and he'll just stick around for now. Got oh, that feast against the bear, though. It's like, oh, I don't need regen. Look at Faye. Four tangos, salve. <laughs> He's doing quite fine. Very happy in this lane be able to suck off that bear. <laughs> Pardon me. Well, we even had a little laugh from the, from the Marana there. As you, as you said it, as you finished saying it, Marana went, ha ha ha. I know her sense it of humor. Great. But yeah, the, uh, the life stealer is like that age old pick against the Lone Druid bear, right? We used to see it in what, TI3, TI4, and then we started seeing the Razors come out to try and combat the life stealer, but this is just a nice little Someone playing for them. Lone Druid at uh, TI3? Yeah. So. I, I can't Come remember, can't remember mid lane, name. mid one, yeah. he's gonna slight a fist and chain, still the final attack oh, misses for an ear, Sal from mid one, no way, oh we can't escape from this, the final click, the bottle, the bottle saves him, mid one's still alive, outplaying his opponents as Yol dives in for the stun, but the mid one oh, Ember, he'll get the first blood, well deserved, with the slick plays. And a little bit of luck, just a little bit though. It was only about one luck. The rest slick plays. So one, one acceptable. Luck. <laughs> one luck. <laughs> and then a little bit of a tilt first blood from from Yol. That's the uh, well. I'm just I'm in. Spine Hunter is gonna run me down anyway, so Radiant's let's go. Uh, well, extra tilt. Puppy comes and steals his bounty rune. Nice oh, start for him. Listen. Wait, Radiant scan. Oh, I thought that was Lizard scanning his bounty rune, trying to see if someone was coming to steal it, but it was Yapsaw scanning up there to try and go and snatch it under the nose of the Lich, but Lizard gets there first. Makes his way back down towards the bottom lane, where they are doing pretty damn well. Lone Druid, 16 and 1, has to go back into the jungle just for a little bit of farm, try and get himself up towards that Hand of Midas, which we can assume he's going towards, but Faye constantly playing aggressively here, always pushing the bear back, and we're still looking at ace level 4, you know. You mentioned that level 5, where you start getting these entangling claws come through, then you can start looking for the movements forward, you can start harassing the Lich, looking for kills, trying to keep yourself alive with this savage draw, but he's got the movement speed for now, just to get away. What is Puppy up to? He's, uh, lurking around. Scouting for people, but y'all making the long walk up towards the Necro in the top lane, Mitch level 5. I wonder if they want to wait for that 6 to come through before they make a play. I was watching uh, a bit of Arteezy Lone Druid actually lately. Uh, I noticed he's picking a bit in FPL, playing a little bit in a couple of the uh, EG officials as well. You know what he's been up to? Mask of Madness Bear into uh, some more classic range Lone Druid. Oh yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Arteezy seems to think it's still pretty good. I think he's been winning all those games. Mad pretty well. Like Mask on the actual Spirit Bear. Oh, mid one. No. No, ranged Lone Druid. Oh, I'm the actual hero. Cool. Yeah. Let's then into like Maelstrom, you know, those kind of shenanigans. Are they going to turn this? Oh, yeah, Absor oh. doesn't get the stun. Yol backs off just about right. Mid one is so difficult to kill. They'll now shrine up. Full HP. He's, he's going to have three remnants ready as well, isn't he? They could go and look for a kill potentially somewhere if they go and make a move. There's no smoke from Yabzor. It's just going to be the Invis rune picked up by mid one. They could set up for something on the bottom lane here as they do make a uh, wander down there. Lizard, Faye. I don't know this is coming, but the Lich backs all the way up to the tier one to sacrifice the creep. Fortunately for him, that times pretty nicely with what Secret are doing as this life stealer going to get turned on with a carapace into the stun mid one. He's holding on to the damage, holding on to the chains, waiting for the rage of the lifestealer to come through and then wear off. Body blocking him up. There's a level five. Hits in onto the lifestealer with the entangling roots, but mid one here with the invis rune. Slight to fist, not even going to be required. Uses it anyway, but Ace secures the kill. Top lane though, in onto hook. Mitch and Lizard, they rotate up, realizing the lifestealer was dead to rights. They go for an aggressive play of their own. Yeah, that's a good play by Lizard. Just get up there right away. Makes that uh, extra easy on the Necrophos. Of course, you need every little bit of damage you can up against him when he's rocking a uh, magic wand and has the ghost shroud. So, good place down bottom. As you said, man, the body blocks for mid one as well with that invis room are pretty slick. No. What's that mean, uh, though, for uh, Bordania? As he is 48 and 23 in the mid lane. Man. He is rocking those denies right now. Went wand and ring, no boots required. 
Didn't really have to worry about his own move speed against the uh, Ember with the leap. Still got to be pretty mad that Jeez. you didn't kill mid one. <laughs> mid one just <laughs> down in here, just like remnanting into camps. Oh, Extra the, efficiency here. It's the classic. Uh, and then he goes and TP's oh, home. Oh, Puppy, you got this one. Oh, hello. Oh, is that going to be enough? Yes, it is. Gets it. Boots, obs, TP scroll, all removed. Was, that was the Marana's boots, right? Yeah, Boronia. Yeah. And the, uh, the haste had already been used, actually, so... And no hope. And then the regen rune top is taken by Puppy, so the Marana... <laughs> oh, oh, what a sad sequence of events. Yeah. Alright, alright, you get the bounty at least. At the very least. But that regen would have been really nice to guarantee some last hits mid, just like... Keep spamming Starstorm. Man, Just Puppy is all over the place right now. He's, he's managed to hit level 4 as well. It, it feels like, you know, he's been running around a lot. doesn't feel like he's, you know, made a massive impact in the lanes, but he's just been there, ready to strike. That fear factor of the Puppy Bounty Hunter being ready and waiting for you. Definitely on the minds here of EPG. Hook under the Tier 1. Gets gone on by Yol. He's got a Reaper Scythe, though, but with a Sandstorm there. Hook might be in a little bit of trouble. Hides inside the cogs with a ghost shroud. Now the Reaper Scythe comes through to slow Mitch down. But with no kill, Hook has to run away and salve. The battery assault, the Hook shot comes on through with that Frost Blast. They look to kill off the Necro, but the final click in, not going to be enough to creep. Aggro back onto him though. Puppy unable to keep them away as Yapsaw stunned up and chased down. They have another cogs with a stick charge for Mitch. They'll bring down two. Secret. They came in to try and save their offlaner, but he was way too deep. A sandstorm from Yol secured his safety and meant the hook couldn't get the regen going from the Reaper's scythe. Yeah, that's almost a 1k gold swing that early. And the fact that it's all going on to Yol is very helpful after that first blood in the mid lane. Now he gets 700 goldish um, for the whole team, 400 for himself, making the plays. Okay. Ace has been left alone though. Ace has been left alone, and this means he is farming away like a madman. Phase boots up on the hero with a ring of Aquila. It's like an indicator that potentially going to go into that ranged form. Usually, if we see the Radiant Spare, it's brown boots, hand of Midas, Radiant. But now, he's buying up these little items, buying up into damage on his hero. We'll see whether he goes for the Dragonlance, the Maelstrom, the Mask of Manus, like you're saying that Artesia has been looking towards. As that, that item has become a mainstay of pretty much every Agi carry that you can think of. Yeah. I, uh, I'm down for the Mask Madness farming. I, I just like it so much better than the Midas, honestly. He goes that route. Midas feels so depressing these days. Yeah, it doesn't give you sustainability in the jungle. It doesn't really offer you too much in team fights other than just the attack speed. Mask of Madness is the best of both worlds, fight and farm. It's uh, you know, kind of like the TA Deso, right? Gives you a nice little opportunity to get into the mix of things. As Boronir gets one of his raindrops popped. He turns back, though, to kill Puppy. Very, very nearly if he'd landed an arrow, but it was still on cooldown. Leaps away from mid one. A three-man mid. Puts the fear into Marana, but Yol rotates in. Marana stunned up as Yol looking for the burrow strike. Max the remnants range away. Stun. Yeah, sorry. That was impressive. <laughs> Full out there. I think um starting to see the disadvantage though of the support setup from Secret and why it is a little awkward. Like it's pretty rare to have something like this. I think the Spirit Breaker 5 and the Tusk 5 are special examples of good heroes for the 5 role because they can both initiate fights without any items whatsoever and with just level 1 or level 2. Um Nyx Assassin oh, Faye instantly <laughs> up top there by the way. He jumps in and out. He's like, yeah, no thanks. Necro lifted uh, his hand there. He was like, I'm yeah. ready to reap Oh, you jumped in the creep. Oh, bottom lane, Ace has to use the Savage Roar on two to escape here, and the hook's already been used, so he should be okay. Focus down the bear instead. They might be able to... Nah, he's salving up anyway, so... Oh. It's gonna be a bear kill in the end. Oh! No, okay. Oh, got him. Who got the money? Was it Lizard? It looked like, uh... Like it looked Lizard Dark. Got it. Yeah, I think it was Lizard. It looked yeah. brown, I believe. Uh, did that Rocket Flare hit Ace? Uh, I think his salve, it, it might have, but I mean, he got the vast majority of his salve anyway. Okay. Okay. We'll see his tangos. Um, oh yeah, but like, you know, Tusk Spirit Breaker, they can obviously initiate super early, but we've been kind of struggling a bit to get Yapsor just getting to the six, and now Puppy's also trying to get up there too, of course, because we really want that, uh, that track money to come through. 
but it hasn't been too much of a problem because they have three relatively oh, survivable good. lanes. The Ember needs a, a little bit more help than the Necrophos and the Lone Druid, but as long as you're picking these heroes that don't need too much help, you can kind of do this stuff. And that's a nice burrow into arrow down bottom. And they found the kill though, y'all. I guess they will do, unless mid one can pull off some of like moves here. The hook shot in onto him, and he has no escapes remaining. Stuck inside the cogs, he's coming to save Ace, but he'll trade his life for it. He thought he could maybe get away, but the oh, DD and are too. running into Puppy now, finding another. And Yapsor? Yapsor on hook. Who are they looking for here? With the Reaper Scythe ready to go, they've been waiting for a kill onto someone. Varnir would be the prime target to take down. They don't have the damage though, not quite to finish him off during the scythe. And Boronia just sprinting away. Has a leap in a couple of seconds. This is likely just to be the Marana escaping. Secret, they're losing heroes and not getting anything in return. Have to go back nice, to the uh, shrine. Nice plays by Ace though. Of course, uh, yeah, it sucks for mid one because he just bought his bots. TB's in to try and help and he ends up dying, but he definitely saved Ace's life. And then Ace sticks around, has the bear just following Marana everywhere. Even when he was outside the attack range, he was blocking that potential arrow that could have came up onto Hook. Uh, as well as onto Yapsor. So either of them could have been dead 100% uh, if it wasn't for the bear following her throughout those trees. And then they almost get the kill back. Uh, maybe if they found themselves a root or something. Well, Y'all are scouted by Puppy. Lots of observables actually over towards this dire side of the map in that jungle to stun in onto Hook. But Yapsor and Puppy ready to turn it back around, unfortunately, with the Impale missing. They won't do anything really serious here, but that arrow from Boronia in onto Hook. They spam their ultis out and they will get two. A killing spree for Yol. And Boronia picks up the kill onto the Necro. And the EPG leading by five kills, leading by about a thousand gold. But these, these fights, every single fight is going the way of EPG. And you, know, you mentioned the kind of awkwardness of the two supports of Secret. Sure, they're, they're two melee yeah. heroes, but they can't react really. It doesn't feel like they're very good at reacting to EPG's aggression. Oh, I mean, they're definitely both very aggressive sports in that sense, too, but... Yeah, so now, right back up top, trying to be aggressive, trying to get something going for his Puppy's dead, though. Puppy's dead bot again. Oh, yeah, he is. Dusted and found. Top lane, looking at Yapsor with a Vendetta ready. Let's see how quick... I mean, there's an armlet is. here, too, though. Yeah, you're right. Alright, we got four heroes, though. Oh, no, we have three heroes. Let's sink and get behind. Chains, can save this. stun. Not quite enough. Armlet on. Infest in. 401, y'all running I don't away. Think that's He's the got the sandstorm, but oh dear me, if he jumped into a creep, maybe he survives. I think they were all back. low enough anyway, though, I suppose. That maybe he was worried that they were in deny range. Yeah. Because now they've been death pulse, so it's hard to tell, but. Yeah, Dyer's almost had to save. Is under attack. Nearly there. Nearly there. Dyer's Still a gank that works out. Finally, for Team Secret. Is this lifesteal? He, he was. Getting pretty farmed. He had the armlet very quickly, even with that aggressive dual lane. Dyer's top tower and he's moving into the Desolator now to deal with the Lone Druid Bear as well as the oh, uh, Ember Spirit. Yeah, getting that Roche too. Um, something that's not too easy for the Radiant to do, really. I mean, they have the Bear to tank it up, sure, but their overall right click damage is pretty weak. Um, at least Necrophos has the talent at 10, the 40 damage. Can help him out there. Top lane, they're looking for Yul. Um, the mini Midas of the Maelstrom is also complete for Ace here, but he's hooked up in the jungle. Oh, and an arrow. Nice arrow. The Savage Roar, not in range. They kill off Ace. Mitch with this Dire Observer Ward and a Sentry. So a great little pairing there to hunt for the Nyx Assassin if he's running through, but also good to catch Lone Druid as he's farming in this jungle where he thinks he's safe. Top lane, Yul. Probably knows that he isn't safe as he's, yeah, backing yeah. straight up with a vendetta and the stun lands as he burrow strikes out, which opens things up for mid one. But the TP's coming in very, Time very for the easily. Boronia lines it up. Hook just getting right click down, waiting for the ghost shroud. Now he star storms with the arrow, not gonna land, but Yol hits the burrow strike regardless. Be precise, it is here, goes out, but it's not gonna be in time. If he had lasted another couple of seconds if that chain frost wasn't there from Lizard. Potentially oh, Hook gets push. away with the regen, but Yapsaw pushed back. The DD from Moraboronia. Carapace is there, but still the damage is dealt. <laughs> and a killing spree for your Marana. 3, 0, and 5. As EPG continue to dictate the pace of the game. It's so interesting to see Clockwork too. Like I feel like he's been having a fantastic game for Mitch here. And it's, it's a first phase ban in a lot of Europe games we've been seeing. And he just kind of isn't appearing in other regions at all. Uh, at least where I've been casting. We had, maybe had like a couple clockworks or stuff, but I remember when uh, Lone Druid was first, you know, once he had the rework and the Savage War thing came out, 
people were picking Chen and Enchantress to gank him under tower. Because then you'd have multiple units, and that was seen as a good solution to fear, right? Because you'd pop the fear, and then one of the units wouldn't be caught. You could keep chasing, keep the vision on him, stuff like that. And then people started picking Clockwork. Because you can't run away if you're also stuck in the cogs. And we've been seeing that, right? I mean, that's what happened to the jungle. Yeah, <laughs> Most heroes, you just pop the fear or something if you're the lone druid, and they have to run away. But... There's nothing you can really do when uh, you're all trapped in the Thunderdome, and they're going to get him again. Yeah, he's uh, trying to play. Oh, where, where are we going to run? <laughs> We're not going anywhere, and you just get hit by battery assault. It's so good. He's trying to buy a four staff, but I guess well, the Maelstrom will help him get there and helps accelerate the farm definitely for the Lone Druid, but that four staff, the Hurricane Pike, is going to be so vital to deal with what you're talking about, being trapped in these cogs. Mid lane, damage done to the tier 1 as... Hey, said Necropost someone, with Scythe on one second cooldown. Someone has a helm. The Lich has a helm. In comes Yapsoy. Boronia leaps away. The damage in onto the Nick Assassin. Looks good enough. The arrow onto the Necro. Lands from downtown. Boronia in again with a dominating streak for Mitch. They clear up two again from Secret. Moving forward and looking for more damage into this tier 2. And, well, Lizard, if he's not allowed to oh, play Micro mid one heroes, down bottom. Oh, you're right. Goes in onto Yol. Blizzard arrives, but mid one has remnants. He has a safety one somewhere as well, hiding in, yeah, just uh, just south of him by about two or three thousand units. So he can jump back into the jungle if he really, really needs to. Mid one tries to steal the bounty rune, but he will just remnant back home to safety as five, five, yes, five heroes converge into his location to try and deal with it because that's how many you need to kill off mid one. And uh, it, it all looks really good for EPG, but of course there is the like they need to keep this going. Because if this pressure like lets up at all, it is an Ember Spirit, and it's a Lone Druid. And these two heroes can get wildly out of control, they start split pushing, they're hard to catch overall. Uh, and they're going to be scouted with, the, or like they're going to have the help of scouting from a Bounty Hunter and a Nyx Assassin throughout that entire mid-game. So unless you're going to invest like a billion dollars in Lords and Sentries, it's going to be pretty difficult to understand exactly like where you're being seen and where you're not. And trying to gank on these heroes won't be easy, but... Yol's dead, and oh. sadly, I think he was trying to set up for this Mitch rotation with the Life Sealer. Oh, he was so close to his blink, 200 gold away. Oh. That's the first T tours of the day. I was, uh, sorry, I was giggling to myself. Lizard, he's bored with Lich, he's bought a helm. His real hero is the Satyr now, he's farming with it, he's pushing lanes. The micro from Lizard is real. He even even had it. Oh, 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 oh jungle, hook. jump in. There, yeah, the Absol, he's been found. Oh, shot forward again, as Hook. Hang on a second, that's not meant to happen. Where, where did he die? Top lane, solo. Solo. Ah, that must be an arrow into Starstorm. That's that's a big kill again for Boronia. 4-0-8 now on this Marana. Swiftly moving into that Manta style, which honestly, well, 20 minutes in, it is complete as they now move into mid one. Does he have a remnant? He does have a safety one. So with a slight of fist and the jump away. Nice attempt though, sneaky. TP in behind the trees, look for the arrow. Oh, Lined it yeah. up, but not quite having it. They had Yol down here on one of the remnants, it looks like, too, maybe? And then there was another one back there, and yeah, he's left one behind, too. But no one's rotating down here. Oh, Yapsor is, actually. Maybe they'll try something. Look at the dire. You see this? They're all standing here with a scan underneath them. <laughs> Where is this bounty hunter? Oh, well, I found him. He's on your courier. <laughs> oh, looks like they were probably looking for that rotation through from Yapsor, perhaps. But yeah. There's a couple too many invis heroes on the map right now. Puppy has no TP. So he is going to have a long walk back down towards this middle lane if they want to set up for a fight. But I think Secret, at this moment in time, maybe just give away a bit of damage, a bit of HP on that tier 2. Get some split push going. Tier 1 bottom lane is half HP. Look to take that down. But Ace, you've got to be wary about farming too aggressively in this jungle area. They don't have any deep wards up here. You know, very commonly you see a ward up here somewhere. A ward maybe a little bit deeper towards the shrine to look out for these kind of uh, movements through from the Dire team. But there is nothing like that here from Secret. So Ace has to come back and farm mid lane. But EPG, they don't pressure. They are actually coming back and looking for a kill. But they're hunting for Ace, expecting him to be here. There's very good kind of realization there from Secret, where they're strong, where they're weak, and bottom lane, they have an Observer Ward, so that's where they'll start to play around a little bit more. As it expires, mid one, after a bit of damage onto this tier two, should be looking to just run away. They've not seen any EPG heroes show on the map for quite some time, honestly. They've been off map in the fog for a good 30 seconds or so. Yeah. Such a difficult hero to deal with, though, this Ember Spirit. They don't really have the best itemizations like, yeah, they have Diffusal coming from the Marana, and you have a Lich that can, I, I suppose, 
get Defusal himself with the uh, the helm, which is also nice for the Ghost Trap, but it's not going to matter in the end if you can't stun the guy. And I'm not exactly sure. Like, they basically need Hook into Arrow, and that's not the biggest window. Uh, it's a little easier as the levels keep stacking up for Mitch. Eventually, we'll get into two seconds, and maybe from there they, they can get something going, but mid one's going to have so many embers of, or items at that point. So how how do you address this? Like, I actually don't know how to kill him. Like abyssal life. They like does... infest hook. Yeah, but it, even that, like infest hook with an abyssal life stealer may not even be enough. They go in onto Ace mid though. The lone druid, savage roll on the bear. Yeah, perfectly timed. Ace runs himself away. Oh, Has but the hook shot. Down. The hook shot. Oh, Mick, hello, gets in there. The damage onto Ace gets him dealt with. Great force effort just to find that angle too. There's an arrow for Onto him, so he's dead as well. Down the bottom lane, they're trying to go in onto the Lich. Oh, they got the track. Should be an easy kill, and you're right, the track money starts flowing through. And the nice shadow can't save you against Bounty Hunter. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Puppy's still in behind, but that's a 23 and a half minute Radiance bots for mid one. Ember Spirit is really going to start snowballing out of control. Yep. And he's going to buy Lincolns because he's, he's thinking like, all right, the only solution is going to come from itemization. It's the only way they're going to deal with me. And yeah, maybe he'll get a lucky bash, but at the very least, I can stop the Abyssal Active. I can stop any thoughts of a Scythe or something from someone, an Atos, any of those things. Don't matter. Buy Lincoln Sphere. Correct choice for sure. And then the Burrow Strike, of course, is going to be the big one. But yeah. Lifestealer isn't even going to head into the bash it looks like. He's... Got himself a Hyperstone. He thought about the Assault Cuirass, but now he's going into Mjolnir after the Deso. With this infest into the Sand King, Yol moving across this middle lane. If he reaches this ramp, though, he's going to have a Rude Awakening, though, with Ace and Midwon both up on it. Midwon does TP out, and he blinks up towards the Ancients, but only finds the Spirit Bear. Is under attack. Nothing happening it's not just hard to yet. figure out what to do is the Dire. I think they do need to Roche. Uh, sentries are on Lizard. He pops one down, but it's not next to the pit. Do they have any more to go next to the pit? I don't think they, they're gonna have to dust as Roche dies. They don't have enough sentries for this fight. Oh, they they have goofed. They have to back up. They're getting tracked now by Puppy. And with Secret holding this Roshan area, Hook is split pushing top lane. Don't even need to commit five in there to try and deal with what EPG were doing. Uh, 1k lead for Secret, 7 to 18. Feels feels weird. <laughs> Honestly, it feels weird. But this is Secret, just out farming, out maneuvering. Sure, the experience lead does belong to EPG, but you're going to have this Tricor lineup with the Ember, Lone Druid, and the Necro all scaling very well. You know, you look at their net worths, they're doing reasonably well for themselves, while it's a two core lineup really here from EPG with the Lifestealer and Marana. These have to be the heavy lifters with damage, while Mitch has to be the full control from the team. But something they definitely do have to start looking towards is the gem. But with good uh, dust... Wait, how did he know? The Absol found with the dust there. They just jump on straight with a star store and a few clicks. The Absol stomped Blizzard with a micro. Gets him. They're chasing for a bit more here, potentially, as Puppy goes in, vision runs away. I th I, Trent, I thought that was a dire sentry obs pairing there, to be perfectly honest. <laughs> with, that, with that dust, with, uh, just Mitch just knew. <laughs> He just knew. I wasn't watching that part. I was just, uh, I, I don't think they can buy Gem on the Dire. They haven't yet, right? They have Like, who who holds it? That's, I think that's the main issue because, oh, well, they look at the Bounty Hunter. Puppy. Can't get denied in time. Oh, Hook might be in trouble, though. Pushed back by the Cogs. This Ghost Round lasts only so long. And another this maneuver. This is a great Roche opportunity now. Oh, you're right. We'll TP back Lizard just to sacrifice and move out this mid lane to get it across the river. Yeah, I think trading tier 2 top is probably okay for Roche as long as you can definitely guarantee it. But Yol yeah, stunned up mid lane, no burrow strike, no blink. He's hit by a stun Yapsor in there with a kill and now this Roche... They're gonna try the combo top but they can't get it. Ooh. I mean, they know it's their only hope. They have to attempt it. Mid one's getting a bit cheeky up here and uh, beautifully done. Gets the tower, make sure there won't be a deny. Feels safe doing so. Well, but like, it. they have no defensive items, right? They, no one's investing in there. Who even holds this gem? I would be so worried for them that they would just like get found out by one of these uh, bounties or nicks, and maybe you see them or something. But then there's some bots that come through from mid one, and then you die and you lose that gem, and that is just yeah. gonna be 
so depressing because they can't afford to lose like sentries and observers all over the map right now. They need everything they can get to try and track down what mid one's up to. And well, he's up to killing Yoel, and he's gone. Poof. And for my next trick, I'll build a Lincoln's. <laughs> I'm gonna farm jungle from kill to jungle uh, instantly. But yeah, I'm struggling to think of an answer to your question. Like, if you put it on Clockwork, he hooks in, he dies. You put it on Sand King, he blinks, stuns, he dies. Gem is going to get dropped no matter who you give it to, bar Lifestealer, but he's going to be slot starved very shortly, isn't he? Uh, actually, it looks like he decides to go back for the Assault Cuirass. Doesn't go for the Mjolnir or the Abyssal Blade, but AC will be coming out as mid one. Radiance Lincoln's into BKB. If the only way to catch him out is to itemize and skill into it, and the only way to catch him out now is to hook into Arrow with a stomp. They've got the stuns, but I don't think they have the damage. He'll remnant away again, and Yapsor actually goes in with a bit of an impale there onto Clockwork. Moonlight Shadow pop to give them that nice little bit of safety. Not required, though, as secret they weren't setting up to fight. That was just Yapsor throwing a, a randy stun into the mix. Yeah, that one was just uh, that was as close as they've come, but just not enough heroes there at that moment. And so away he flies again. But the bash will be the next item for Faye. So I'm just gonna have to roll the dice a bit. Hope that'll be a, a good enough solution. Some sentries placed down to get an observer and a sentry for it. And a nicely done lizard. That'll pay for itself. And Puppy, while well, he's on the hunt, place another observer sentry combo, not spotted by the dire, and he's gonna find himself a courier. Again. Oh, third oh one of the game. Has been Wait, how did he see that? Am I crazy? Was that just pure luck? He's just so good. It, it just literally. It just, he just walked into it. Yeah. Oh, epicenter? <laughs> Where are we going? Oh, we're going on a bear. Oh dear. Spirit bear. No, don't die like this. You don't have mana for Savage Roar. Good boy. Ace will have to resummon his friend. Oh, they know Puppy's here, I think. Is that Puppy pinging them or them pinging Puppy? No sentries around, so... Maybe it was just Puppy saying that they're retreating back, moving across to the east to try and catch mid one. Again, defense remnant up on him, so killing is very, very difficult. Mid one has created so much space for Ace and Hook. I, I really don't feel like they would have, you know, this this yeah. level of net worth. They, they would be maybe 3,000 gold short on what they uh, are currently totaling if they didn't have this mid one Ember splitting the map and causing havoc and drawing attention. All the way on the other side of the world as Yapzor tries a little bit of a sneaky play there onto Mirana. Boronier gets hit by a change, but Manta's out of it. Now Mitch in onto the Nyx with the Lifestealer. One taps him. Yapzor absolutely obliterated inside the cogs, but mid one's invis and hunting for a little bit of a scrap. If he can find a solo pickoff, that'd be great for him. Dust pops out there. Fine puppy. Okay. Right next to the Roche Pit. Is this their opportunity? Lanes are in a decent state. I mean, you've lost all your towers at this point anyway, except for the mid one. Oh, he spots this uh, remnant, actually. Boronia does. So they think mid one might come back here. They're going to try and set up on this, perhaps. They've got the golem just looking at it. <laughs> the, the problem is, they'll, he's only going to come back to that if they go on him bot. I think that's the only reason he has a remnant there, is if they swing bottom lane with, you know, three, four, five heroes, he'll go farm, yeah. die jungle, then he'll push top lane. So you're never gonna catch him. That's that's a zero percent waiting for the remnant. That the moral of the story. Yeah, do not that chase Ember Spirit, guys, unless you have many many stuns. Well, and away he goes, and no, oh, well I'm back. Well, they know where he is, but is it gonna matter? Probably not. He's actually gonna go for a kill onto Yol. No way, mid one. <laughs> Come on. Is he gonna get this? Yol's very nearly dead. Oh, the hook remnant. They got hook him. shot. Now they've got him. There's the kill. Over aggression from mid one. He was so sure that he'd get the kill and survive, but Life Stealer with a Deso and the Soul Curass, that's a lot of minus armor for Ember to deal with. <laughs> I mean, he he was right the last like four times mid one did that, <laughs> but not quite this time. Uh, so, big, big pick off. Um, obviously, yeah, he's buyback, but not gonna be worth it, just keep the lanes pushed. So, finally, bit of a preview here for EPG. I mean, you look at the kill score and you're like, all right, guys, we've killed him 24 times. How many times have they killed Puppy, I wonder? Like, it feels like, obviously, five times for him and seven for Yapsor, and then even Hook's starting to rack him up with a seven for himself, too, but... It's been, uh, quite a bit of these guys just throwing bodies around the map to help out mid one and ace... ...in their farming adventures. 
Well, yeah, those... Zora. Oh. Those lanes. I'm gonna keep scouting. Yeah, they're not. Uh, they're not in EPG's favor anymore. Top and bottom, both heading towards the tier threes. Yapsor still looking for Yol. Poppy's coming across as well. Ten more seconds till mid one will be able to come through as well. But yeah, they needed that track. Oh, nicely done. They're gonna have the uh, Carapace into the dust. One more second for mid one. Might not even need him here. With the track, oh. they want the goal. He, he wants to join in. They definitely, and he gets the final touch on him to take the kill as well. That's another three-man track kill there from Secret. Uh, how many monies do we get? 268 over onto the Ember Spirit, moving much, much closer to that BKB now. As Ace, we've not really looked at him too much recently, right? He's been very, very quietly, passively farming, just pushing yeah. out lanes. Honestly, very, very safely. He has done an exceptional job at not getting caught out the past five, six minutes. Now, he did die a couple of times inside the Radiant Jungle, but since then, he's not been going into the Radiant Jungle. Oh, they actually arrow jungle. mid one. Uh, he has a defensive remnant expiring now, though. He's sticking around to fight. Goes with the aggressive remnants instead and takes out the Aegis. Immediately gone. Yapsor hunting in the back lines now as the chain frog bounces between the bear and the ember. Goes in for another hit as Boronir doesn't land he's the arrow, but the Star Storm lands. And they will find a monster kill streak there for the Marana, taking down mid one. Secret, they now extract. They do not want to be involved any further, but they've killed the Aegis. They've kind of stymied that momentum that EG, uh, EPG was potentially looking to build up with that high ground potential, breaching the tier 3s and the racks. But also the tier 2 top lane might be a difficult take for EPG at this point. Bottom at least is feasible. They had the DDM Marana. She's waiting. Oh, that was her BKB. Oh, she was just waiting for that. Is that man. another one? Are you kidding me? And he just got it. I, okay, oh, I've... God, Poppy, God, dude. How does he keep finding these things? I mean, that's like the. Is that the? F I've missed. I've missed one now. That's like the fourth one. Holy. So I've definitely seen three. Absolutely insane. He just knows. He knows when people are delivering items somehow. Yeah. He's Top. got it, man. Top notch courier sniping. Hook shot. Oh, close. Ace is still going to get arrowed. Why is he going in? Borrow with the life steal of the shrines, though. Activated two of them. Hook. Nicely played with the Rod of Aethos back. Matted off by Boronir, but this is a big oh, dive. Savage draw. Oh, no. Sends it back with the Reaper Scythe coming on through. Takes down the Sand King. Mitch is now in behind tier fours. Running through past the tier threes. But there's surely no way he escapes. The Shuriken bounces back off of Mitch's head into the Mirana. They don't care about Mitch. They want to kill Boronia. In comes mid one with the slide but no chains. Remnant forward. There's no stuns. He needs the damage. Boronia escapes with a TP. So Mitch will also. Get back to Fountain as they switch their efforts away from the clockwork, looking for the Marana, but the slight chains not landing from mid one allows her to escape. Uh, definitely a, a deep dive, right? I mean, you hit this arrow inside the base, and you're like, okay, well, it's too, it's too far, and then suddenly your Sand King's in there, right? But I think, I think that's fair. Ember's dead. You know, you need to make some big plays to win this game. Can't just sit back and hope it's going to go well for you. And now Faye, harass in the mid lane. Got to be a little bit cautious, dude. Does not want to go too deep, I don't think. Poppy's not here to set up tracks, though, so this Moonlight does work. <laughs> They've actually placed the Sentry bit. They're just like, all right, we have to handle the stupid Bounty Hunter. I mean, it's crazy he keeps killing them, but Poppy, of course, has spent tons of time just doing this, right? Walking back and forth, so... Yeah, the odds are in his favor. Yeah, definitely are. Oh, the hook. mid one. The chain stun is here. They pop it with a four staff, the Lincoln's that is, but there is no arrow from Boronia. Now the Scotty of Ace, the long range attack come through. Hook on the high ground, though. Aggressive. You know, one v fouring as Mitch drops in the back to mid one. Now without the Necro, do you still want to turn and fight this? Yol is on low HP, but they killed the bear. Ace still holds this high ground ramp with the shrine. PG, they won't go in. I think Yol wants to use their own one. The rest of his team don't want to get involved. Yeah, bit of a, I mean, you see this Ember, you know, he's got an invisible when he thinks he's safe. He's under your observer sentry combo. You feel like you have to go for the hook, but if the arrow was ready, maybe they have a chance there. Uh, of course, there was quite a bit of backup with the four steps there yeah. from the rest of the Radiant side, so probably survives anyway, but oh, well, mid one again up top. Oh, he actually gets bashed. Ooh. Maybe? Uh, the centaur's no, killed no, the off. Heroes around. Oh, uh, they found the Marana, though. Farming Ancients, Yapsor was tracing the Marana's movements all the way through with that Vendetta. Calling on Ace to come in with the damage and that nine times godlike streak. 
Oh, what's the what's the damage there? Almost 900 gold for Ace. So that moves him much much closer to the butterfly, which he's heading into. There's no much MTB. much closer to mid one. <laughs> the guy's been all over the entire map, <laughs> farming every single wave. You're like, yes, I'm keeping up with it. Give me some money. Yeah, Give seriously. me some money. All right, desperate times. They have purchased the gem. And they're gonna hand it off to probably Yo. It looks like the courier is just trying to decide. Of course, can't drop it in the backpack. Rather annoying. Yeah, that's the second time now, guys. All right, gotta move. There we go. Now bring the courier back. Got it. That happens to me like every game still with the gem. Games like this always remind me of uh, a conversation I had with one of the. Uh, not not security, but one of the people that worked at the key arena uh, at TI yeah. uh, was it last year or the year uh, the year before? Uh, definitely not this year. But I was chatting to one of them down near the press area, and one of them asked me, "So the kill score at the top is it like uh, you know a race to 100? What, what do the kills matter and mean anything?" And I'm like, um, "They they kind of don't mean anything, you know. The team with the most kills is probably <laughs> ahead, but at games like this, you know, 40 to 26, secret are winning, like actually just straight up winning." Yeah. EPG I think we have the net worth fire these days, or the, <laughs> well, indicator thing of some close value. Yeah. I mean, I'll give Valve credit, it's tiny, but I was down with the bar, man. So was I. I, 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 I hate on the bar. I like, I like JJ's one. It's yeah. very shiny. I do like that. Well, secrets. What is your plan now? Looks like Ace is not going to go for the butterfly. Wants the assault cuirass to try and again deal with this minus armor, but they're going to get jumped before that happens. The root comes on through. The TP uh, in or out? Who's coming in? It's the life still retreating. BKB from Marana turns back to fight against Puppy. But this is pretty disastrous with Ace doing so much damage from the low ground. Untouched as Boronia taken out of the game. Mid one jumps back in. They've lost their huge support. The secret. They've got all their cores. And with the Reaper side slamming the down onto Clockwork, the gem. Like you said, even if they have it, they are likely to lose it as soon as one bad engagement comes their way. EPG, things are slipping out of their hands very, very quickly. Abyssal Blade on Lifestealer might be able to remedy this, but Secret have such a stranglehold on this game and such incredibly powerful core players on core heroes that Ace and Mid One really seem untouchable. Like, it's a bad sign when the fight starts and I see the arrow hit Yapsor. Even though I know he's gonna die, I'm like, this fight's over. Like, if they're not arrowing this one, I, I just can't see how it's gonna go well for them. And now they have to use their, like, Abyssal Blade on the bear, I suppose, but that's 35 seconds where mid one's like, okay, cool. I'm alright now. Mid one has a Shivers Guard. Even more armor. I saw him pick up the kind of casual plate mail. He was still thinking about the BKB, but he just says, screw it, I'm finishing Shivers. More damage. Yes, uh, a, a nice bit of slow to chase these guys down as well as we take these team fights relatively simply. EPG definitely meeting a higher caliber of opponent than they have in the qualifier previously. Secret even with a stand in, performing very nicely. All right, they have a moment here though. Like Rana's coming back as long as Mitch stays alive. It's a tough ask, I know. Oh, hookshot. Go, Mitch, run! Have a, save some hope for your team. Okay, so he's alive. Mid one has no buyback. Maybe they can combo up something here with an Abyssal. Kill mid one. Perhaps they'll be able to get the Aegis for themselves, because it's not there quite yet. They gotta wait a while here for Secret. There's, there is a, still a chance, I think. But, obviously, it's uh, a slim one. I need to get that Infest Bomb going. Sand King life sealer because they need the force down to pop the Lincolns. They need the arrow. They're gonna maybe need the hook shot here as they pop the Lincolns. But Ember, he's already out. Mid one is way too quick for you to try something like that at this point. He's got into the rhythm of this game. He knows what you need to do to try and kill him, and he knows how to combat it. Remnants straight away as they try to scout out Roshan. The big man is up again. Aegis and Cheese. They start things off inside the pit here with Ace moving on forward. EPG. They're smoking. They're hunting for someone sitting back they here. They don't even have a... They don't really have a particularly good anti-Roche lineup either. I mean, it's okay with the hookshot and, and the Sand King, but... It's still a pretty tough fight for them to take in here. Especially with the Absor, Four Staff, Ghost Scepter. Stopping Moran from doing too much there. It's the Blink stun in onto Puppy, but they don't even though. kill him. The bounty survives, and now the tracks will start coming out. The hookshot forward, catches it onto mid one. The Chain Frost there, he can't get away. They finished off the Ember, and now the Chain Frost bounces through onto Ace. But he's going to force Staff, gets himself a little bit further out with a good Ghost Shroud and Blink away from Hook. Dodging the attacks of Marana, 
They escape with the Aegis and the Cheese. Losing mid one and Yamsaw seems well, pretty reasonable for that because EPG, they kind of needed to stop the Roshan from happening there to, to have a greater chance of winning this game. Yeah, I don't think it's enough just to kill mid one at this point, but they have to go as deep as possible here on the Dire. Trying to, well, you, you think maybe you're trying to force a buyback or something. Uh, in the end, it's probably just going to them just being controlling lanes. Okay, I mean, we coming in here. Yo, you, you going to show up? Are you coming, buddy? He's way up there. He is farming somehow. That arrow, like, are you kidding me? Barnea, hello? Did you At see that point? He says, yeah, I don't know. That was <laughs> right through the crack, man. <laughs> this, like, creeps everywhere. It just comes straight uh through and hits Ace. <laughs> That was insane. Okay, well, EPG, they take the tier 3. That's a good objective. They've actually managed to convert. Killing mid one, going for the tier 3. Shrines are now open for them to take, so this is going to be a nice boost of gold into them. Are we, are we looking for a scythe on any of them, though? That, that's the big question. There's just the Abyssal Blade on Life Stealer, and it doesn't look like... Oh, there is uh, a potential scythe on mid. Clockwork wants it. Uh, potential Bloodthorn as well for the uh, Life Stealer. Oh yeah, another decent choice. Uh, the cheese is in the backpack of Ace though, and that'll likely be handed off to mid one. So, if they miss any sort of an opportunity, then he'll be able to pop that right away. So, uh, and what happened that fight though? The arrow, right? I mean, that really feels like their only hope is they have to arrow mid one, uh, which is of course much easier said than done. I was so worried for that fight because they blink initiated onto Puppy out of all people, and you're like, well, that's probably the worst possible target. Uh, but because of that, the fight kind of collapsed in, the arrow was flying through, and they made that connection, so... Perhaps they can be a, a bit fortunate and have that happen again, especially if there are... Three times the arrows! Ooh! As Bonnie gets his way up to level 25 here in just a moment. Ooh! You know what's and, sad, uh, Trent? Lich had uh -oh. this helm at like 20 minutes, and now has a helm and a ring of health, trying to buy four staff, but... Liz has yes, honestly done a great uh, job with his satyrs, his centaur stomps have been on point in a couple of these team fights, or a couple of these catches, I guess, at least, yeah. as they try now with a Lincoln's pop from Lich. Amber has already jumped over to his remnant in the middle lane, and secret, they are gathering, looking for a battle. Mitch alone here, stunned, held in place, and Reaper Scythe, he won't get finished by that, gets a full staff and a bit of distance with a Lotus Orb, but the remnants from mid one coming with the damage, the slight, not going to, or the chains even, not going to land, and Mitch, well, he's we're here with the Moonlight Shadow. They're going to try and battle around the shrine, though. Mitch is dead. Hookshot lands. Two man burrow. In there with a the life stealer. Infested comes out. There's oh, Mitch gone, but Yol with a chain frost he from Lizard Jesus. coming through. Yaps was dropping low. But the Aegis and Cheese, they're here from Secret. They're all alive and full HP. Five heroes will die from EPG. And there's really nothing left in the tank as Secret. Absolute warriors running up there into the shrine, battling through the regen, and still a one for five trade. God, that was terrifying. He got bashed up down to uh, 69 HP before remnanting out and then popping that cheese. Nice. A little bit tight there for mid one, just a little. Uh, head, I think he might have. I don't actually, it's hard to tell if he would have buyback, but in the end, it doesn't matter because they win that fight. They're pushing through the mid lane, and they're looking good doing it. What's the answer? EPG? Three arrows. Three arrows. Ooh. One creep dies, Puppy nearly gets clipped, but mid one is already starting his work on the bottom lane. In comes Ace or Puppy's war cry. Get that damage going into the towers as the demolish from the bear kicks in hardcore. Glyph is forced. No buybacks from EPG. They've got the Sand King respawning now. Lifestealer trying to get up onto the front lines here. Bait secret into a battle that they potentially can't take is that arrow nearly nearly catches mid one slides past his butt cheeks but he's got a safety remnant hiding back here which he'll jump to straight away 26k lead they got more g's than kills in this game that's that's crazy honestly yeah I mean, and now he's an orchid for himself. What, what was it at one point? It was like 8 to 22 or something? Yeah, there was a pretty large separation. Dyer's top shrine is under attack. But Team Secret executing their game plan to perfection. They jump forward looking for the Sand King mid one remnants again. He's hasted up. He just wants to dive. He wants to kill. He's got an orchid. Won't find y'all just yet mid one. 
flame guards nearly jumping into the tier threes there alone. Very, very aggressive, but he feels invulnerable at this point. It, it just shows like how how good of an investment those supports are at the beginning of the game. As oh, that's a nice two-man impale mid lane talking about nice supports here. As the Absor is setting up for some potential kills, but just drive them back into the base. But uh, yeah, it's very difficult to set that game up, right? It's tough. You got a bounty hunter next to Assassin. They don't do all that much for the first 10 minutes, honestly. Um, they, they had some great plays. Nothing on the, the players, obviously, but it's just the heroes, the nature of them. But I'll tell you one thing, you don't end up with a Lich for 40 minutes of your game. Like, yeah, Lich is pretty, pretty sweet for the first, like, 15. Maybe you get some nice ults around that Roche to the 20-minute mark kind of a deal. But then the rest of the game, you got a Lich. And uh, when you have an Ember Spirit, pushes lanes by himself. Lone Druid pushing all these lanes. Necrophos too. It sure is nice to have two supports that are just scouting out the entire map for you throughout the game. Um, and not a Lich. It's a sad life, man. Oh, hey, there's a ward inside the base. Couriers beware. Hope he's uh, got to keep his eyes peeled. Yeah, definitely. I try to go in onto Yapzor here, the carapace. And the four staff hiding in the trees, but the rocket flare scouts him out as the arrows. They will land from Boronia and they'll just kill himself for killing the next assassin eventually, coming through from the Marana. You had no place here. Also, the importance of you know finding that loophole in the draft, right? Mid one's Ember. They picked it fourth, and they realized yeah. that there really isn't anything here that can deal with it. Then the life stealer came out, and it was like, cool, this Ember is just gonna have free reign in this game. As long this as he's not. A, uh, this is like, what, first phase ban uh, for the past year or so? Second phase ban almost assuredly. The mid one Ember. Yep. And then able to grab it so late in the draft for them. It's always something that's going to be on Secret's mind. Um, they obviously know, just as well as any other team, when they can abuse it. They do clear the Observer Wards inside their base at least. With this gem from Mitch, but. <laughs> Lizard's second investment into Vision this game, a gem form, as they're still holding his other one on Bounty. Poor Lizard. Not the most fun hero to play in this kind of game. Pretty much walk into a fight, throw a chain frost, and hope it bounces. Hope someone casts spells on you to tank some for the rest of your team. <laughs> yeah. Hope you don't die, die just to like splash damage and AoE collateral or something <laughs> Dude, like that, right? He still just has that ring of health because he needs to keep buying these gems. <laughs> yeah. Ugh. But oh. they need them. This is a good That's move, though. Question. This is a good move. Mid lane, probably going to be a big indicator that Radiant are getting jumped, but they've already made the move. Necro taken out. And Secret, down one hero. Spread pretty thin across the map here. Mid one shifts down towards the bottom lane. The gem on Mitch. Not gonna scout out Puppy just yet. Yapzor is also here. They blink forward with an attempted go on the Marana, but a two-man burrow strike into the arrow. What? Goes past <laughs> Puppy through his buff. Okay, now Boronia with no leap. Slowed by the Scardi of Ace and cleared up. Two minutes on the sidelines with another kill from the Lone Druid Bear. Yet to double. This is going to be the end of EPG in game number one. The silence out from mid one. The hook shot is there. The bashes. Oh, the abyssal's not coming through. The Lincolns can't be popped. And now the damage with the Reaper Scythe. GG is cool. They've lost everyone. Five heroes going to die as Secret wipe them up inside their own base. Team Secret victory. It's a good game to like analyze the overall strategy of a draft. It's pretty clear what Secret had in mind. They just. Envisioned, we get to a certain point. These guys have some pretty weak pickoff. 